Hello boys and girls, today we are going to be painting our handprints. If you remember from a while back, there was um, the, these pie trays that had your name on the edge and um, they had sand in them and you went and pressed your hand in there. I might have helped you to press your fingers in and then there's this white thing on here. So what's that white thing? That white thing is actually plaster that I mixed and poured into your handprint so it could take a plaster mold of your handprint. It went into all the little crevices and, um, and became hard like this plaster. It was liquid, but now it is hard, hard, hard. Um, it is still very fragile, so be very careful with it. It will break. So I'm gonna set that aside. What I did is I t lifted your handprint out of the pie tray and I tried to get off all the little um, pieces of sand that were on there. I'm gonna just get the last bit of sand off of this one right here. So I'm just using a paintbrush. So this is mostly cleaned off. I'm gonna put this aside. So today we are going to be painting these. We are going to be using the three primary colors, which you should know already. We're going to start with the lightest primary color, which is yellow. The lightest color is also the weakest, which is why we wanna start with yellow. So you can decide if you want your hand to be yellow or if you want the background around your hand to be yellow. So I think I want my actual hand to be yellow, so I'm going to go around here. Now I lose the shape of my pinky finger right here, but I'm gonna just pretend I know what it is because this was like the, I don't know. I don't know what that was, but it's a very, strange shape. I just want the shape of my hand. If it looks like that's not the shape of your hand and you want to just paint the part that is the shape of your hand, like over here, it looks like I pressed my thumb in and then maybe I pressed it in again a little deeper. So I just want to go around the deeper part and I'm being very careful. So notice when I'm going around here around this area, I am being very careful not to make my fingers mix. That's why I had you spread out your fingers when you first uh, put your hand into the sand um, so that we wouldn't have our fingers running together. Now this looks a little weird. It looks like my hand should come over here a little bit. Even though I can't see where I pressed it in, it's not deep enough right there. I know that my hand should be over there a little bit. So I'm gonna put my hand over there a little bit. Um, I'm. I also think this is a little weird looking, so I'm going to make it a little bit thicker over here because my thumb comes out a bit. So I wanna make sure that it looks like my hand, even though I might have moved my hand a little, I might have made a, a slight mistake. So now I'm just putting a little bit more paint on there so that I get a nice good yellow. Um, the yellow is kind of see-through, so you do see the sand color underneath it, so it kind of dulls the yellow a little bit, so that's why I'm putting a little bit more. So now I'm ready for my background, and I want to wash my brush. You always want to wash your brush in between, so I'm going to go ahead and put my brush right in here. Now these are tough, so you can, I always say don't hold it straight up and down like this, but today you can. You can hold it straight up and down pound on that brush, doesn't really matter because it's a tough, tough, tough brush. So now I'm good. I think most of the paint is out of there. I can't see any paint that's on there, so I'm gonna go back into a color. So you can pick which color you want for your background. Um, hmm, I don't know, maybe I'll do uh, red. So I wanna make sure all the water is out of my brush because I want a good solid red. If you have your brush full of water, you're watering down the color and it's not gonna look as good. So go ahead, take the other color and try not to touch the yellow. If you do touch the yellow, it might mix because it's two primary colors and what does yellow and red make? Dun, dun, dun. I hope you guys said that yellow and red makes orange, cause it does. That's exactly what it makes. So I'm trying to be really careful in these areas. If you have a, a little edge where n there is no color, that's fine. 
If you want to go a little on top of the yellow, it probably won't matter a whole lot if you go a little on top of the yellow um, because it is the weaker color. That's why we started with the yellow because it is a weaker color. So I'm going right on the edge there. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. Going right on the edge over here. Um, I do want my hand to be enclosed. Some of your hands are right against the edge, but if you just put a tiny little line of color on the edge, that would make it look fantastic. You have to wash your brush if you're changing colors. If you don't, you're ruining the paints for your whole group and they're gonna be so mad at you. Please don't do that so that they're not mad at you. Okay, so I'm gonna do this whole thing. And then I'm going to use the other primary color. Ooh, I got a little yellow on that, so I probably wanna wash my brush right now. I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna make sure that I get all the water out of it that I possibly can by rubbing it on the side like that. So your last color has to be a pattern, and it could be a pattern on your hand or on your background or both. Um, see, I don't think that my brush can fit in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this on this part that I already painted, and it makes it thinner when you smush it like that, and then I'm just going to go right in there and try to do it the best I can. So I think that is pretty good. You might want to switch your hand around so you can see parts that you didn't see. Like right now, I can see that I didn't do this part right here. Do you see that? So the top of that, because it was facing the other way, I couldn't see that my color was not getting in there. And you don't have to lift up your piece like I'm doing. I'm just doing so the camera can see, so you guys can see. So I'm going to go ahead and do this little bit right here. And then I think I'm good for my blue. So I'm going to wash my brush really, 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 really well. Now for the blue, you might want to get a different brush. You might want to get a smaller brush. That's fine. I might put out some nice brushes um, so that you could do smaller details. So I'm going to pick up some of the blue. What should I do? Maybe I'm going to do a zigzag. So I'm going to go in here. Now I'm going to wash my brush a lot for this because it's going to mix with the color, whatever color is underneath, it's going to mix with. You can see that that's already turning green right there. So I want a lot of color on my brush. I don't want the yellow on my brush, so I'm going to wash my brush every time I get new paint. You can see how that's turning a little green, and if it does turn green, that's okay because you're mixing colors. You're mixing the primaries into the secondaries, and isn't that awesome? Now, the one thing about, oh, I, I did way too much water. You can see that's gonna drip. Oh, no! Okay, so um, I'm gonna try to get the water out of here. Okay, so the one thing about patterns is that they repeat. So it is not a pattern unless it repeats. What if I just went with the green? That's kind of cool, too. I kind of like that. I'm going to go up here, continue my zigzag, because it's repeating. Yeah, some parts are blue and some parts are green. I kind of dig that. So if you have a, a artistic dilemma, sometimes you like it the other way anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. If you have time and you want to do the background as well, you are welcome to do that. You can, um, I'm going to continue with the blue because there's not much blue on here and I feel like there's a lot of yellow. You could do yellow on top of the red as well. It is totally up to you as long as it's not red on red because that wouldn't look like anything. Ooh, I like how that's turning purple. But I did have too much water on my brush so I'm going to make sure I go along the side and squeeze off that water before I get more. So I'm doing little polka dots. Polka dots are always fun. But you don't have to do polka dots. You could do straight lines, you could do zigzag lines, you can do curly Q lines, that would be really difficult. So you could have a pattern of lines in one place and a pattern of shapes in another place. That's two of our elements of art or elements of design. 
and that's great if you can fit in lots of elements because elements make an artwork beautiful. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, so I am going to put this on the blue table where there will be a space laid out for you to put it on there. Your name is already on the back so you don't have to worry about that. And then you just clean up. The brush goes in the dirty brush bin, the paints go back on the blue table, and I will take care of it all. That's it. I hope you enjoyed.